Hi, welcome to Shelly's Everyday Prepping Adventures. Today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience. Um, I was going through my garden tools and I needed to replace my hoe. So, the last night after I was done working, my husband and I decided we would take a trip to Walmart. We needed some things and I wanted to see if I could find a hoe. Couldn't find a hoe anywhere in my in my Walmart. So across the street, we have a tractor supply. We went across the street to the tractor supply and the only hoe that we could find was a child size purple hoe. <laughs> so needless to say, that didn't work. So we have an Amish store. Um, we have a lot of Amish around where I live. I live close to Pennsylvania just a couple minutes from Pennsylvania. And the Amish have started moving down into, um, down into Maryland. So I uh, decided to check out the Amish store and I went and I took a look around, see something on my deck that doesn't look right. Oh, no, it's okay. I thought it was a snake. Oh, and the heavens, no. Anyway. <laughs> So I went to the Amish, we call it the Amish hardware store. They have a little bit of everything there. Um, they have, um, you can buy a water heater there. You can buy hinges, you can buy, you name it, they have it. So they had a big supply of garden tools and um, I did find there were two hoes left. So I don't know if there's been a run on hoes or not, but um, <laughs> I finally did find one. So. I just needed to make sure all my gardening equipment was in good working order. So um, if you have any Amish around you, you need to utilize them. Um, they are very good at providing um, a lot of useful information. They grow great plants if you're not much for starting things from seeds. Um, and like I said, ours has a hardware store. So I don't know um, what's in your area, but you could check them out. So from there, I went to another Amish place, which is a flower. Um, well, they have flowers and fruits and vegetables and containers, and they sell fruits and vegetables. Last year, um, I bought some beets. My beets didn't do well last year, so I bought beets off of them, and I canned them for the winter, um, and they, they worked out really it worked out really well for me. So um, I went there just to take a look around, see what I could find, and... I didn't find very much really. A uh, couple of black raspberry bushes, I did buy them. I They were only $3 a bush and they were, I actually got four of them. So um, I called my husband at work. I said, we're gonna have to find a place to put these raspberry bushes. He said, well, they'll take over the yard. I'm like, well, we'll find a place. So I'll shoot a video when we find the place to put them. Um, so I was watching Poplar Preparedness today um, today is Friday. I want to say it's June. What is the date? June 3rd. <laughs> June 3rd. So I was watching Popular Preparedness and he made a really good point I'd like to share with you. Um, his point, he, and it's in the Bible, it says a wise man seeth trouble and prepares. A foolish man does not. Um, all you have to do is open your eyes and look around. You can see the trouble coming. You can see it. Um, so prepare, be wise, prepare, prepare your family, prepare your home. Um, as in my other video do, um, you know, build a little, and when I say build a little hardware store, I just mean sort of like with a pantry, just a little corner, maybe with some filing cabinet drawers or, you know, um, something that you can put stuff in that you need every day, hinges, bolts, nails, that kind of thing. Um, you may not be able to get them when you need them. So yes, a wise man seeth trouble and prepareth wisely. Foolish men do not. So let's all be wise and take care of ourselves, okay? So I had a friend ask me, is it too late to plant a garden? Well, I live in Maryland and it's just now June 3rd. So no, it's not too late to plant a garden. There are different things that you can plant. Um, Many of you on this channel probably already know that. You can plant them two or three times 
you know, um, I've planted beans early and gotten as many harvests off of them as I can, and I replanted more beans. So it's quite possible to still plant in even July and August here in my area. You would have to do your research and where you live to see how that would work, but we need a fall crop, a fall harvest. So um, there's a small list of things that you can still plant even in Ju July. Um, tomatoes, green beans, peppers, pumpkins, arugula, kale, lettuces, and radishes. And that list is not comprehensive. There's more. Um, so if you haven't got your garden started, now's the time. You need to get your butt in gear, get that garden growing, start learning. Um, I had a, a talk with a friend over the weekend. Um, about purchasing books. You never know when the internet is gonna go down or when we don't have electricity or something happens and you need, no, need to know how to do something. And she was a young lady, she's only in her 20s, early 20s, and uh, she ac absolutely sees what's going on. So we did a lot of talking and um, she was very happy that I suggested that she buy books. She asked me to please send links to books that I had purchased, so I did that. They were um, books on canning, books on growing, just different things. You want to keep them in a prep, I call them my preppers library. I have a preppers library and also I recommended to her and I would say the same to you is go on and Google stuff, print it out and put it in a binder. I have a binder that I started. I also have a binder of recipes for um, my pantry f food. So, I mean, you want to stock up, but you don't want to eat the same thing all the time. You need to, you know, freshen it up a little bit, change it around. Um, just make it a variety of things. So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend that uh, for anybody to please think about a little hardware store. Think about, again, like I said, not really a hardware store, but I call it a hardware store. We have one in our garage um, with stuff that you need. Um, a little prepper's library, I call it that you keep hardback books. They don't have to be hard, they can be paperback, but you know what I mean, not electronic books. And then print off stuff that you need off the internet. I also recommend that you print off any of your personal uh, information that you might need um, in case the internet or electric or anything like that goes down. It's nice to have hard copies of all of that stuff. So I was speaking to another friend, um, I have I have asthma and some allergies that, that have plagued me for years. My asthma is <clears throat> well under control, um, but sometimes I get, I have to use um, an inhaler and that inhaler will cause um, my tongue to get sore. It causes a uh, yeast infection on the tongue. And I, I was going to the doctor, you know, to get medicine for it. And um, a friend of mine who has been through this before, suggested that um, I swish wash mouthwash around in my mouth and that would kill it. So that prompted me and it did work. It worked great. I've, I haven't had to go back to the doctor for that in a long time. So that prompted me to look into other uses for mouthwash. So I'm going to give you 10 good uses for mouthwash and why you should keep it on hand. I know we did the um, we did the uh, baking soda the other day. Today, I'm gonna give you some tips on the mouthwash. So, first of all, you can use it for cuts and blisters. If you don't have antibacterial ointment, mouthwash is a great alternative when treating blisters, cuts, and scratches. Just apply the rinse to the wound using Q-tips, cotton balls. Okay, um, two, poison ivy. This one surprised me. If you itch and you're irritated with poison ivy, you can put, you can dab some mouthwash on a cotton ball and put it on your poison ivy and helps control the itching and the irritation. It will also help dry out the inflammation. If, you, if you've ever had poison ivy, poison shumac, poison oak, you know that it gets, it's very, um, it's blistery and it weeps and it's, yeah. So the um, mouthwash will help to dry that up. This is another one that surprised me. I said we can use baking soda as a personal deodorant, but did you know you could use mouthwash also as a personal deodorant? Again, you would put it on a cotton ball uh, and 
put it under your arm for deodorant. I haven't tried that. Um, let's see here. Number four, nail fungus. I've never tried this one either, um, but it does say here that you can use it to treat a nail fungus infection. Um, as you know, mouthwash has alcohol and antiseptic in it, so that would help with that. Um, as the same with baking soda, you can also use mouthwash to freshen your laundry for a particularly dirty load of laundry. Use a cap full and you want to make sure that the um, what you're using is sugar free. You don't want the sugar kind. This has to be sugar free because you don't want to put this on your poison ivy and be all sticky. You know, that kind of thing. So uh, keep in mind you want to use it, excuse me, to um, without the sugar. Okay. Um, you can use it. Number six is for dandruff. You put it on your head, you let it sit for a few minutes, and then you rinse. Please don't get it in your eyes. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't want that. Okay. So that was, excuse me, number six. We have number seven. After ear piercings, you can use mouthwash as an antiseptic after you get your ears pierced or your nose or whatever it is you're getting pierced. You can use it, um, dab it on a cotton ball and dab it on your piercing to um, kill any bacteria to stop infections. Number eight, this one surprised, surprised me a little bit, flowers. Um, you can put it on your flowers. You put it in a spray bottle and you spritz a little bit on the soil around your flowers so they last longer. It kills any um, bacteria that can lead to decomposition of your plants. So I thought that was interesting. I haven't tried it. If I do decide to try it, I'll let you know. These are just some things that I found. Number nine, you can use it to clean your toilet with. I found it kind of weird, but I also understand that um, if you, you can put a cup of mouthwash in your toilet bowl and let it sit for an hour and scrub and it will come clean. Of course, it kills bacteria. Um, and then 10, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 is toner for your skin. Um, you can apply it to your face after your normal cleaning routine. Put it on a cotton ball and wipe it evenly across your face. Um, Mouthwash has been, let's see, mouthwash has seen its fair share of transformations. Anyway, so, and then the 11th tip, of course, was the one I suggested when you have sores or um, possibly um, any kind of irritation in your mouth, you can swish your mouthwash around in there and it will clear that up for you. <coughs> Excuse me, I have something tickling my throat today. Um, I've been out today. I've been working, working, working in my garden. I took a half a day from uh, dog grooming, so I didn't, um, I did four dogs today. I had one lady show up late. Um, <coughs> excuse me again. I had one lady show up late and I had other obligations, so I had to ask her to reschedule. Um, I'm not sure she was real happy, but I, I aim to please everyone that I can, but it's not always possible. So anyway, back to this. I worked a half a day. <coughs> gosh, gosh, hmm. I don't know what that's about. It's a tickle right in my throat. So anyhow, um, those are my suggestions today. No, it is not too late to start a garden. No, um, you know, you can still get moving with that and um, start doing your thing with that. And uh, just remember that a wise man sees trouble and prepares for it. I see trouble. I'm preparing the best that I can. I pray that you are too. And um, <clears throat> let's see. Make friends with your local farmers, guys. <coughs> so sorry about that. Make friends with your local farmers, your local Amish. You can go right to the source and purchase. I did say in a previous video, I don't know, not everybody's seen it, but in a previous video, I did say that you could go to your local farmers in the fall after their corn has been harvested and ask their permission to pick up any corn that got left on the ground. A lot of times those corn pickers do not get all the corn and they leave plenty on the ground. This is good if you have chickens. Purchased a grinder through Amazon. It was a little less than $300. So we can pick up any corn that gets missed. We grind it up and we feed it to our chickens over the winter. 
We need every little tip that we can get to get through this. We need to um, work together. Um, if one farmer tells you no, go ask another. It's quite possible that they will allow that. Um, it wouldn't hurt to ask. Uh, anyway, make friends with your um, farmers. Make friends with the people around you. Um, oh, one other thing I forgot I wanted to talk about. You know, the young lady that I was talking to in her early 20s um, about prepping and stuff. She's on board. She Pinball did a video about who do you trust. So she bought a car from a car dealership. I'm not going to name any names. And with the purchase of the car, she got free oil changes for life or whatever. Well, you know, they have to make their money back somehow, correct? Well, she's a young lady and she's a very sweet young lady. She took her car, which is only two years old, to the car dealership to have the oil changed. Well, without her permission, they changed the rotors on her brakes. They told her that they were rusted through and she needed new ones. Personally, I've never in my life heard of that. I'm not stupid. Wasn't born yesterday and I'm not saying she's stupid. She's just young and naive and they took advantage of her. Um, Luckily, her father was very angry about it and um, he took care of it, but that's not the point. The point is, who do you trust? Who can you trust in times of crisis? If you can't trust somebody to just change the oil and be honest with you, with your vehicle, who are you gonna trust when H SHTF happens and you need someone to have your back? You need your friends close and you need to build relationships. Okay, well, I've gone on long enough today. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for any new subscribers and all the ones that have come back. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notifications bell, and I'll see you in the next video.